Hello. Yeah. Well, we're prepping for tomorrow. Uh, we have people mm, taking tomorrow's test. So we're going to cover grammar. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I try to cover everything essential. Um, but obviously, we can't really cover everything like 100%. But we are trying to cover 80 to 90% of the things that are going to come out. How are you, Marty? Yeah, I like that word, grind, Sam. Yeah, grinding every day. You're taking August test, yes. We have, well, you have plenty of time, Gonzales. Gonzalo, Gonzalo, Gonzalo. You have plenty of time. So people ask me all the time whether these tests are still relevant, and this is something that I actually contemplate not not every day not not always but it's something that i always think of because if if it doesn't really matter we shouldn't be doing it right because it would be a waste of time but the more i dig in and then the more i ask because i'm friends with a lot of like the admissions people uh, it seems to still matter you know so maybe getting a good score i think it's going to give you an edge and also i think you should do this more so for the potential scholarship. I mean, scholarship is huge. Even last year, when some of the students who got, say, 15 something, right, on the ASAT, they got tens of thousands of dollars in scholarship. I mean, that's free money for you to take. Why would you not? Some people would say, like, I, I don't want, I don't care, I don't want to prep for it, but I'm, I'm asking maybe for a couple of weeks of prep, not months, right? So what what's the loss there? What if you could get fifty thousand dollars in scholarship through doing okay or well in the SAT? Is it, isn't it worth it though? I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I I definitely think it's worth it. But people just don't think the same. When will you guys do more SAT session? The the goal is to I would ideally would love to do on a regular basis SAT, ACT and other tests like on a different schedule like GRE and GMAT too. Um, I'm trying to come up with a calendar a calendar and a schedule that we can ac actually accommodate throughout the week Monday through Friday. Um, I do need support for that. I I need math a consistent math instructor. Um, but yeah, the goal is to do it on a regular basis instead of just doing popping up and doing two to three days. Um, obviously, not many people will come if we do it on a regular basis, but still, I mean, if it helps, I don't mind doing that. I did reach out to as many people as I could, but see, you got to understand, like, even when you, you know, try to kind of go all in the days before the prep, a lot of people just don't want to do it, you know, and then I understand. Maybe two years, three years, if we go back to the three years, right, it would have been a completely different game, right, because then it was required, so a lot of people would jump in. Back in January and February, we had a streak every day. Yeah, oh, yeah, we did for almost two months, a month and a half or something. You know, we went on and on and on and on. That was pretty good, right? <laughs> Oh, that, well, appreciate it. If we can find a way to help more or reach out to more people through this regular stuff, I would, I would, I'm in, I'm, I'm totally in. Like, you know, I, I don't mind doing that. I'd be happy to do that. Um, no, it's like absolutely no strings attached, you know, like I just wanted to offer it to you. 
Do reading, please. I will. I broke my leg back in January. Hmm. I hope it's okay now. How are, the, how are you, my classes going? Well, yeah, I just ended. I just turned in... <laughs> I just turned in my final report for the semester, for summer. Uh, many of you don't know, but I'm still a student, which is kind of weird because I'm very old, but then I'm a teacher too, so it's kind of weird stuff going on. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, that sucks. I broke my wrist, you know, when I was 20 something. And it, I don't think it's still healed. Why it still hurts like crazy. Anyways, Ryan, you should make a Discord for us. Oh, we have a Discord. Yeah, we, we have a Discord, very active Discord. Mm, there is one. And then we are active. Okay. Let's get going. Uh, some people will join us as we go, but I really want to cover three main concepts for grammar. Uh, I know if you're if you have taken SAT, it's going to be sound. It's going to sound very similar, but I want to take it a little bit differently. The first one that we're still going to focus on uh, is parallelism. I'll keep it short so you you know. And then redundancy, which goes shorter is better, right? And then the last one is going to be uh, what we call what, what did I say yesterday? I, I think I use a different word for it, but hold on, let's see. Mm, okay. So we're still gonna go with relevancy. Now for the ACT, you gotta understand, um, look, here's a, a neat trick that you can use. Um, I would say that 8 out of 10 uh, are the shortest or second shortest being the answer. So if you do the math, 80% of all the answers are out of four choices is the shortest or the second shortest. So it eliminates half of it, right? Uh, yeah, it's redundancy reason. And then uh, there are a bunch of them. Like if you go through 75, see, this is one of the reasons I don't know why people prefer ACT over SAT because SAT only has 44 questions of grammar, but ACT has 75. That's a lot. That's a lot. You know, even like, I don't know. I wouldn't. Anyways, not, not trying to be biased here, but yeah, it's just a lot. Uh, if you go through 75, I'm pretty sure that all grammar related is going to be the shortest or second shortest. Um, some of my former, like, you know, students have measured, you know, <laughs> uh, that if it was actually true, right? And then it was quite close to 80%, yeah. I mean, depending on which year, but it's still, like, gravitated towards 80%. So I'm going to show you that. I think this is a very important one, too. And I think a lot of like prep people on YouTube and, and, and TikTok, they're saying that being, including myself, is 99% wrong, which is true. But this one doesn't really appear anymore that much. So even like if this is like a wow thing, like, wow, you know, that's pretty cool. It really doesn't pop out that much anymore. It used to, but not, now it has faded because now I think the, you know, the ACT people know that we know. So it's like cat and mouse game. So dump that, you know, it's not really going to be that beneficial. But although if it does come out, then you know 99% of the time is wrong. So I'm going to start with, let's start with this together. Um, maybe spend 10 minutes with it. I would say, me personally, right? I would say that in terms of grammar, the, the most important hack is same thing as reading, which is core versus non-core, meaning... The ability to cross out mod, meaning modifier or details. Now, if we had more time, obviously, to prep for any of these tests, we would go into it. This requires weeks and weeks and weeks of training. It would definitely like help you, but you can still do it, you know, the day prior, like this one. You go, what is the SVO? So SVO, by the way, means core and detail means non-core. So think of it this way. A lot 
of people hate to ride subways. So this is the subject followed by the verb and then you got the O. Now the reason why you should be able to do this is because this actually brings a lot of transparency. Right? And then it helps you with structure base, which is 50% of 75 questions are based on structure. You can actually do this a lot faster. Look, it says a lot of people hate to ride subway, but I love them. And then pretty much cross that out. Right? I love them, right? So you got another SVO. So I love them. So this is called the SVO comma, but SVO, right? And that's how you get started. You know, this is the first step you should take. If you really want to hit, like, if you really, really, really want to hit 75 out of 75, this is like the first thing you should do. Yes, prepositional phrase, take it out, right? Yes, yeah, you understand, right? So you're just trying to get rid of stuff that don't matter. That's the first move. The second move is understanding that everything should be parallel. How do I know that something should be parallel? And let's see if there is one that we can do together. Um, I need parallelism, okay. Sample, right? So right there you see a conjunction. That means this triggers parallelism, meaning this side and this side must be the same, right? So first of all, you can see this one too. It says it's. This triggers what we call a homophone, meaning one sound Right, so it's either it's, it's, and they actually put this, which is grammatically wrong, but you have three options. Uh, every time this is underlined, your options are one, ooh, are one, two, three, right? Or you can go plural, right? And then, oh my goodness, what just happened? Yeah. And then boom, boom. Yeah. Now, if you only have a day to go, this is like, this is totally not attractive because you're going like, what the hell? I don't have time for this, right? I just want quick, 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 quick stuff. I get it. But all I'm saying is if you say people will dig into their pockets and I need a verb that goes parallel with this. So if you look, right? So people will dig or open, right? Oh, for number eight. <laughs> yeah, for number eight, is, it is impossible. It is impossible, yes. So two things, right? One, understand and capture the SVO and then get rid of the detail to see structural issues. And number two is parallelism. And then we're gonna talk about the redundancy stuff look i look at this and then i go boom done right the reason is because might and possible is redundant and you're going to get a bunch of these by the way and then the easiest way to get rid of parallelism is to get rid of yes is to get rid of right is to get rid of the all the length of it it's the fastest way so we covered three things already, right? So go with the structural thing by getting rid of modifiers, of positives, prepositional phrases, adjectives, adverbs, all those thrown out. And then look at the structure. The secondly, parallelism. Third, redundancy. And that covers like already what I just said, covers about 40 to 50% of 75 questions, which is very powerful. Can you talk about the reading questions in the grammar section? Oh yeah. We can do that. So these type, the ones that actually have their reading questions, right? So there's no grammar issue at all. Like if you sit there and think of like, oh, what's wrong with grammar? You're wasting your time. It says, why is it that she likes the subway? So I go back and it says, I love the subway for whatever reason. And then it tells you right there, a musician balancing a cello case, two Buddhist monk in the saffron robes and a group of stockbrokers. So you got, if you, it's variety, right? So if you actually paraphrase it, it's variety. So you go, and the keyword here is variety. 
right? Which one says variety? That says variety and done. That's reading, pure reading question there. Uh, yes, Sam. Uh, science is not science. Anyone who says science is science is they don't understand the point of this test. Science is not science. Science is reading and then and, and puzzle game. So you don't require any background of anything, no physics, no astronomy, no biology, anyone can take it. And that's that, you know. Do not read the whole thing. No, don't read the whole thing. You're wasting time. Why would you read the whole thing? It's not going to help you in any way or form. If the reading thing pops up, you only read that zone. Like if it's asking about there, then just read this much. That's all you need, you know. You, you don't have to. That's a waste of time. Thank you, Marty. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday I did go over it. Don't read everything, you know, it's not cool, and so forth. Okay, I'll come back to grammar, but I already covered. Those are the three main concepts you should know, and, and, and it's a good thing that uh, uh, Lugain uh, actually asked this question because this is also an R, not for redundancy, but this is what we call relevancy, meaning I'm keeping stuff relevant to what just came up there. Right? It's called relevancy. So it's, it's it's very similar to SAT parallelism, and then you got R, which stands for redundancy, and then relevancy. Of course, the formality which we emphasize in SAT is not really there. Instead, we work with what we call structure. Okay, structure. Now, if you're gonna sit, if you really want to today, if you really want to get into like punctuation or idioms like prepositions, so forth, it's a waste of time. It's not gonna stick. You're just not gonna be able to memorize all the idioms. Uh, you're not gonna be able to fully digest punctuation. So it, there's really no point of doing that. Just know this one thing though. Um, period is the only thing that you really need to understand. So period equals opening or closing is same as this, opening or closing parenthesis. So if I do something like this, S comma, mod, mod means detail, comma, VO, the first comma either opens or closes, followed by open or closes, see that? Then these two go together, so that is wiped out because it's parenthesis. Remember, comma equals opening or closing parenthesis. You gotta do that. You have to be able to, do I have one sam good sample for, to practice on? Opening and closing parenthesis, opening and closing parenthesis, comma, I need comma. Okay, right there. See this one? So it says about three and a half million people a day write Subways. I think may, well, I think maybe I have met them all. So you have, you got, you can take that out, right? So about people ride subway, SVO, and then I got SVO. Now, when you have SVO, SVO, this is called run on, right? Meaning there are two sentences going on and on and on. So to fix that, you need to put a conjunction in there or a semicolon. Now, all these things, like I said, it's not going to over, like, it's just not going to just pop up. This is like fundamental stuff that requires a lot of like study, study, study. But if you have, say, one sentence, right, and then you have another sentence, and then there is nothing that separates the two, it's called run on. So the best fix for that is to add a period, semicolon, or a conjunction. So just remember that. If you have a run on, you only have these three options. Um, so I go back and then see, this would be still a run on, and this is what we call SVO plus mod, and this fixes it because it has a comma conjunction. I really wish we had more time. This is one of the reasons why I really think that a regular, even if only 10 people show up, right? This regular, I think Sam remembers this best, right? There has to be this regular sort of review. And then, but short, not long. It doesn't have to be like an hour. It can be just 15 minutes, 20 minutes, but like on and on and on. I think would help a lot. 
Now, let's go to reading, because a lot of you are here for reading, and then my iPad's not working, of course. All right. Follow along, let's go, and then have reading session. This is same thing, It's we are still on ACT number six, reading passage three. I'll do more examples. Yeah, but let's just quickly go over family is singular, families. Huh? What does that mean? Can you show PRF again? I wanted to write, oh, I'm sorry. Um, PRF is actually for SAT. PRF is parallel redundant, redundancy and relev, oh my gosh. Relevancy. And then the last one is formality. However, formality is really not important for ACT, so you kind of don't have to do that. Instead, just go with what we call core, non-core structure. Or, if you're really out of time, just focus on these. Right, and don't mind the last one. Uh, is reading for SAT and ACT same? Uh, they're same, but ACT is a lot easier because they literally copy paste keywords instead of changing it. I don't know if they're lazy or they just want to make it easy, but they just go and copy paste everything. Okay. So I have, yesterday I said, when you're doing reading, you should start with this. It's humanities. Humanity meaning is the easiest department or school of study, even in college. So you go humanities, which is three, four, which is natural science, two, which is social science, and then the last one is fiction. And I said, if you read a lot and you actually, you are a fan of reading books, then you should go with one, three, four, two. This has yielded the highest uh, average score for everyone, not just, you know, like random people or like, you know, a study group, but it's just for everyone. Also, it's very important that you read this called opening blurb, and then don't read stuff that's going to be a waste of time. The only thing that you have to understand is the, the title of the book is called Albany. Uh, 1958 could help a little bit. Lydia Minatoya and appears in a book of taking to high monks in the sh snow. And then it, again, it's in Albany, New York. There's really not a lot of information there. And then I always say you should go to the conclusion because conclusion gives you that bam, like, you know, the delivery of the verdict. And it says also, read the last sentence first. It says, she squarely faced my father. I don't care if you speak as husband, she said. I am a designer. So she's the mother saying, I'm a designer to the father, right, strongly. And then it says, okasan, which means in Japanese, mother, was intractable, meaning hard to control. Eloquent in anger. Okay, well, you don't have to read that, but just say Okasan is pissed and then looks at the father and says, <laughs> I don't care what you think or shut up, you know, uh, I'm a designer. And boom, it ends. It's fiction, yes, but I still re require, you know, recommend that you should. Uh, it's not fiction, I'm sorry. It sounds like fiction, but this is actually based on real events. So, uh, it's a memoir. Memoir is not a fiction, guys. Memoir, it's based on real grounded stuff. So this is still nonfiction. Now, let's go this. Uh, recommendation, read the first, right? Followed by zigzag, zigzag, and read the last. This saves time, okay? So, and then I call this spark notes approach. When you look at it, it says, uh, the meter of the childhood was rising and plunging in the sewing machine needle, rapid and smooth like the endless distance drum roll. It was time when the dream of America never seemed finer. Hold on. <laughs> hey guys, why is PR, PRR, oh what the heck? Anyways, some people are getting filtered for saying PRR. 
Um, it says it's swearing, which is not. Anyways, the Albany of my childhood was a festive place. So every time you see a positive word, please do this. Put a happy, smiley face. Yeah, but PR, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's profanity. I don't know. So every time you see that, this is called from yesterday, it's called connotation, which is positive, negative, neutral. If you track these things, they help tremendously. It says that Albany of the child, my childhood was very positive. And the spirit of 19th century, blah, 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 blah. A cable car ran along the streets named for trees. Okay, so everything's happy, happy, joy, joy. To be honest, this is how I read, you know. I mean, I'm in a position where I really don't care about the score and so forth. And so I, I, I don't recommend that you do this. But I really read the first and last. I just skip the mid. I mean, I, because I feel confident that, you know, I'll, I'll be able to come back. But I don't recommend it because I think a lot of you need some kind of consistency, right? I mean, if you don't mind practicing it that way, that's also an option. It says each year in early April, an annual dinner dance was sponsored by the Pharmaceutical Institute where my father worked as a researcher. And boom, look forward to a long anticipation and back upon with nostalgia, meaning, see that? So like three lines, three lines. Now, if you read only this and jump this, would the, the passage make sense? Yes, it would still make sense. It says, annual dinner was sponsored by the dad's work. For me, the dinner dance, I look forward to it and with anticipation. Watch this. This is what I mean by like a magic thing. Like, oh God, I lost track of. Oh, okay, where is it? Right here. We said what? Let me read it one more time. It says, I look forward to anticipation and backed upon with nostalgia. So one, two, done. Right? Are we are, are continuing this from yesterday and restarting? And we're continuing from yesterday. Uh, we actually finished. We actually finished passage two and four, and we're doing three and one and three. Okay, how about this? Check this out. I don't care what this thing says yet. Fifty nine sixty four. I just want to know what the keywords are. So fifty nine. It says, when I was seven or eight, window shopping and dinner dances stopped. The Grand Eye facade of the downtown, everything is sad, look, right? Despair, no dance, no music, grimy, everything, right? <sighs> What's going on? Is everyone, is everyone okay? Anyways. So I got two things that I picked up from there. One, when I was a kid, so think about it. When I was a kid, two, right? Two, window shopping, whatever. Window shopping, window shopping, right? And then three, sad. So where do you see those three things? Yeah, that's, yeah, that sucks. Window shopping, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, and then it says, it sucked, right? So you go, when I was a, oh, when I was a kid, oh my gosh, when I was a kid, window shopping, and then it was kind of <laughs> snowy evening, you know, means cold. I don't know if that really resonates with sadness, but still. Yeah. Let's look at 6992. 6965. It says, as I grow older, who cares? See, see, that's what we call non-core. 
My mother began to sew for wealthy women. The women lived in the country homes where sunlight reflected from swimming pools just beyond the French doors, played across the... Who cares about that description, right? So this is what I mean. Like, how does this help us understand? It's only talking about my mother began to sew for wealthy woman. And then where does it end? Said some people, and some people have to help me. Like 92, it goes all the way there. It says, Okasan was intractable and then says, hey, I'm a designer. So I go back. Let's see. K1, mother or Okasan. Out the door, you see it? So, yeah, always remember, <laughs> always remember who's the subject. The subject is the mother, Okasan. Okasan, Okasan. Uh, the relationship between narrator and mother is what we call neutral connotation, or it's a, this one's positive connotation. So, how does it end though, right? Think about it. When, when the mom says, when the mom says, I'm a designer, damn it, I know, don't look down on me, I'm a designer, right? So what, what am I trying to do? The mom is saying, hey, I'm not just sewing stuff, right? I'm a freaking designer. So I don't think that's neutral, and I don't think there's really a relationship. This is all about Okasan or mom. So it's actually G because you got to go positive on the mother, remember. If you go with keyword plus connotation, you'll get it. You'll get most of it, you know, just go. So that's why you have to put smiley faces, sad faces, smiley faces, sad as you read, you got to do it. Yeah. Sam left the house. Like Sam is quiet. It's easy. He comes in at the beginning. He was like, what's up? And then, oh, I thought it was asking. No, I think. The focus itself is to give sort of strength and credibility to the mother for taking up on a job and then having pride in what she does and saying, hey, when the father says like, hey, come on, you're just sewing. And they go like, no, 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 no. I'm not just sewing. Okay. I'm a designer. That's, that's the sense of pride right there. So strength and integrity. No, you can also read first and last sentence of the, I just skip for the sake of time. But if you go from here all the way down here, you will see that there's a lot of the the mom trying to you know overcome uh, the obstacles. So yeah, uh, forgive me for giving and jumping stuff around. It's because of time issue, but you can always go back and, and check it out one more time. It says I solemnly, solemn meaning seriously, would nod the honor recipient of this arcane, arcane cultural wisdom. See all these terms, arcane. You know? Arcane means mysterious. It's not negative. It's just saying mysterious. And solemn means serious. Okay, serious. Who cares? Let's go to 53. Like, you don't get stuck there. And then it's right there. I got to start from the beginning. It says, I always thought of that dinner party Eve had some of the magic of Christmas. Isn't that positive? Magic of Christmas. Unless you had a trauma on Christmas Day. Every year, I would... I would what? Oh, I would perch on a bathtub edge. I would watch my father fix his tie. See the nice dimple below the knot? Father would turn from the mirror and bend to show me the dimple is very important. I solemnly would nod the honor recipient of the arcane cultural wisdom. Now, say you don't understand it. It's okay. You, you do, but you do understand there's the father and there's the narrator and then everything's positive. Yeah. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. So we got to practice to understand that a lot of times we're not going to understand everything. I think the worst part of uh, test taking, not just, you know, these standardized tests, but overall just test taking is that instead of, you know, I think we try to understand it too much to a point where you just like digging your own grave, right? You just keep digging and digging and digging and digging. And you can't get out. Remember what I said yesterday, staying life footed superficial which is a negative word shallow it's really the way to go but because say i don't i don't get it and you go like i don't get it now what's your first reaction when you don't get it you go back and reread it and then you reread it it's not like you're going to get it you still don't get it and what do you do you go back again and try again 
and say, if it doesn't work out, what do you do? You put a star next to it and you say, I'm going to come back and reread it. And you see, that's, there you go. That's the very definition of craziness right there. Instead, I'm just going to go with the narrator, right? Plus the father plus happy. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. Why? Because those are the only things that really have. So, okay, so where is that? So I got the father, her, right? Uh, did not understand, negative. Her father was honored to be able to share personal information, so you got positive there. When the father was put in the tie, he pretended to be honored, which is not really positive, and then silly is negative. So you go negative, positive, I can cross out A and C based on, again, what we call the connotation, right? And then you go back and read, her father was honored to be able to share personal information about the daughter. Is there anything about personal information in line 53, 54? None. How about the information about her father was giving her seemed important and made her feel valued, meaning in the interaction between the two, none. Good. Okay, like an eagle, her word slipped regally down the great distance and struck with an awful ease. Ah, oh, it's very poetic people, you know. I don't like that. I don't like it. But anyways, we go back and it says, like an eagle. Who's talking now? Who's talking? So you go. You got to find. Uh, once after luncheon in the city, a woman came to our house for fitting, standing erect on the doorway then bowing slightly my mother met her formally won't you please come in may i ask may i ask please take your coat here you go try to put it somewhere clean Ooh, that's nasty like an eagle her words slipped regally down the great distance struck with an awful ease after the fitting my father was ashamed and angry see that's negative you see that actually i do not like this work he stormed you do not have to do this, you know. We do not need this kind of money, of course. This is like the men talking. He waved his arm dismissively at Okasan's sewing machine. They come and look at our home with contempt. You kneel in their helm like a servant. Mo dame desu yo. Well, yeah, I don't know Japanese, but it says, Mo dame desu yo. It's no good, I tell you. Why am I, why am I doing storytelling? I don't know. So, well, it's kind of negative, right? It's kind of negative. But who are we talking about? We're talking about the mom. So we got mom, 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 out. Negative, negative. Why negative? Because it feels like she's kneeling down to customers, taking their coat, and acting like a servant. There you go. Demean meaning acting like servile. Eh. Not age, yeah. Okay, so all you gotta see, you see all these circles pop up, right? So this is mother, demeaned, excitement, anticipation, uh, narrator, father, narrator, father, positive, positive. So you just keep doing that, right? So keyword, connotation, keyword, connotation, and keep bouncing. Having said that, let's do quickly a little, at least one because time's running out, at least one science, and I'm just gonna prove that it is just like reading. Uh, I did mention that when it comes to science, you should not read uh, the passages, waste of time, right? So I will not do this, right? I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go straight to, go straight to the question. This is the first time you should just go straight to the question. But yeah, the positive negative strategy works really well, and also, if it's neutral, so there are three options. It can be neutral, like history is always neutral. Science is neutral. So you can be positive, negative, neutral. Now, if you're talking about science, like in this case, it's talking about germination. Um, would germination be positive, negative? It's neutral. So you put an N, right, neutral next to it, and then that helps as well. Now, let's talk about this. In study three, right, compared to hand picking of seeds, oh God, study three, Right? This is study three, right? Uh, hand picking. Where is hand picking? Okay. So it's asking the flow. Look how it goes. 
right? So it's asking for the flow. And they always do this, by the way. Increase, increase, decrease, decrease. So look at the results of study three. One would generalize that compared to hand planting of seeds, ant planting of seeds results in what? Right? Results in what? It's higher than this one, right? Higher, 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 lower. So you go out, out. And we're talking about germination, so done. Right? The whole point of measurement in this case in, as a result is germination. So the way I see it is this. Um, I think that the, the point difference that comes from science section is just based on how you look at it. I always, by the way, I suck at science. I never liked science. I was always weak at science, struggled with chemistry, biology, because to me, um, I, was, I just didn't get it, right? But I always said that not being good at science actually helped me right understand these things better because i don't go too deep with them like i don't try to analyze and understand the the, the study itself right all i try to do is i stay kind of far from it and then just look at what is it what is it that we're trying to do and then what are the trends and and sequences that we can observe case in point check this out variable was controlled my understanding of a uh, variable that was controlled meaning maintain the same meaning fixed so i go study number two and this is the only time that i actually read what's going on right i see 20 and 20. Zina, 20 and 20. so uh, this is what we call fixed meaning a control control meaning that you have no like in terms of variables. So the best way to see it is equal sign. Uh, that's what I learned in high school. Like, so you guys are like, you guys are like right now, you're currently going through it. Like two seed, see, keyword. So I go, done. See that? That's how you're, by the way, if you, if you ask me now, what is the passage word experiment about? I have no idea. I have no clue, right? And you go like, well, that's so anti-educational then. Like, you're not teaching us. We're not learning anything. The point of these tests is not to learn stuff, right? It's to be able to stay relevant by executing, uh, you know, some of the skills that you learn in K-12. Same thing. Look, according to the results of all studies, study species A and B are similar, equal. So I look at all the numbers. Look, I look at the number, number, number right all the numbers and then <laughs> that's all i do really look i look at number number and then i go oh equal see that similar i mean come on right like you could you could literally train like uh, i don't know like you can train anyone to say hey uh, the question is asking for similar numbers right so look at all the numbers in the table and then give us something that is similar or equal and you go oh yeah i found one is 6.2 6.2 what is 6.26? It's percentage of seed mass compared to elasome or elasome. Elasome. I don't know. See, this is why I suck at science. No interest whatsoever, you know. So the species A and B, same percentage of seed mass composed of elasome. So I go, boom, 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 done. So if you're joining us right now, we are destroying this thing, you know, the test itself and going like, nah, don't play by their rules. Like if you read the whole thing and then you try to solve this, you don't have time. How are you going to find time? Realistically speaking, if you actually try to read and understand the entire thing right there, it's going to take you two, three minutes. Let's go back and do simple math. You guys, some of you love math. You got half an hour, give and take 35 minutes to solve 40. So you have less than a minute per, and then you're gonna spend three to four minutes reading the passage. Huh, how are you gonna do that? And then it's not like you, you have like only four of them, you have five, six, seven of them, right? So you're gonna go seven passages and you're gonna spend three to four minutes, two to, two to four minutes reading it. There you go, the time's gone. Seven times four, you're out of time. How are you gonna solve 40 questions then? Simple math, it just can't be done. So any of you, who read and try to understand, you're making a huge mistake. 
It's not science. It's puzzle. It's a puzzle game. Now, I'm not here to talk about what's right and what's educational. No, I don't care. I just want you guys to get a good score. You know, there's nothing else. Like, look, in study two, side three. Did I read the question? No. Do I care? Frankly, no, I don't care. All I want is what again? Study two. I'm in study two, site three. Okay. I got A, B. They're about the same. So what the hell is going on with A, B? Then I look up. This is the only time that I shall actually go back and look up and say study two, uh, A, B. Where is A, B? It says both plans were absent for site three. All I'm looking for is site three. Look. In the entire passage there, where does it talk about site 3? Only there. It says both plants were absent. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to plug in. Both plants were absent from site 3. Boom, right? Boom, done. Welcome to a, a totally different world, you know? It's a totally different dimension. Now, I've seen... People go from a 28 and then finally understand and accept that this is it. You know, this is how you solve it, you know, and then drop their habits or whatever the whatever you know, the ways that they were doing it. And within a week or two, I've seen them go 35, you know, out of 20 something. So I, I'm a firm believer that it can be done over days, if not weeks. However, right, uh, habits are very dangerous because it's very difficult to control habits. A lot of us can't change. If I said, let's do it this one more time. Like most of you, this is what you do. And I'm not, look, I'm not criticizing. This is what I would have done too, right? So I, I'm confronted with this. I would do my very best the way I was taught in school to read, right? Everything. Understand what's going on. Read everything, right? And by the time you're done, your two to four minutes are gone. Now remember, there's seven passages on, in the science sections, right? So I got already two to four. Now, if you're a slow reader and it takes you four minutes to do it, just reading the passages, you're out of time. That's like half an hour right there. And you are given half an hour. How are you going to solve these 40 questions? That's the one, right? So instead, forget it. Forget it. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go, right? And then just focus on this. What is it? What's the question asking? Go to study two and locate site three. Go to study two, locate site three. Okay. And then highlight that portion. What does it say? It says both plants were absent. Thank you. I go there. Study two, site three. Both were absent. Done. Both plants were absent. See? Puzzle game. Puzzle game. It's not science. Science is not science. Reading is not reading. These are all facades, guys. This is all like fake, you know. It's it's really standardized tests. I, I hate standardized. I don't know why people think I love it. I hate it, you know. I hate it as much as you guys do. But you got to understand how to deal with these stuff, right? They're not testing your knowledge or intelligence. Absolutely not. The only test that I know that actually tests your intelligence, which is intelligence is made of stuff too, but the only thing that actually tests your intelligence is called LSAT, which is law school entrance exam, which is heavily based on IQ test. Other than that, it's not intelligence test. This is like IQ test. Yeah, IQ intelligence test, right? It's based on LSAT, 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 law school. That's the only thing I know that resembles anything. Guys, come on. You can all do this, right? Watch. Well, I'll do it one last time so you guys can crystal clear see what's going on. Watch. I'm given this, I didn't read the passage, it tells me study two, site three. I go, study two, site three. That's my sentence. Both plants were absent. I come back and I go, both plants were absent. Where else does it say that though? Where else does it say both plants were absent? Right? Done. Case closed. That's science. If you actually crack that code, You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just don't freak out. Don't don't go back and read it ten times. Like don't freak out. It's all good. Yeah, we good, everyone. Okay. 
Is there any anything that you want me to? Um, you want you want you want me to do more grammar, more reading, more science? We have like nine minutes left before we transition to math. And uh, Mr. Mike Z is going to also cover science the normal way, the normal meaning, the traditional way, which I have nothing against it. You know, I think people should, if you feel comfortable doing the normal, traditional way, do it. My only problem with any of that is that you will run out of time. You will run out of time. You will run out of time. You have some grammar to end it off. Guys, voice your commands and desires, and I'll, I'm listening. Uh, whatever you need, you know, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Yeah, I think Sam, who's disappeared, by the way, is, uh, you know, it's everything that I do and promote is grind. Well, that's grind. It feels good, you know, after, after a while, you feel good. Okay, right there. Hmm. So, I'm, well, I'm, I'm not going to look at the answer. I'm just going to look at this and trying to figure out what the hell is going on. It says this group, comma, remember the comma opens parenthesis and then closes parenthesis. Right? So you go, group took part, all that crossed out. Why? This is called prepositional phrase, triggered by the preposition in. Right? So the group took part. I got my SVO. There's nothing wrong with it. Like structurally, there's nothing wrong with it. Punctuation was nothing wrong with it. Then you make a call by saying there's nothing wrong with it. Now, one, if you're going to use which, you need a comma in front of it or preposition like that. Okay. You cannot just have a comma without any of those. So that's another rule that you have to know. And then you have subject, verb, and then you go verb, O, oh, see that this is? You cannot have S, S, V, V, O, O, meaning subject, subject, object, object, verb, verb, right? Um, think of grammar as binary, meaning you need subject and you need verb, subject, verb, subject, O is not necessary. Subject, verb, is binary combination. You cannot ever have S, 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 V, or S, V, V, no. If this confuses you, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm just saying you cannot put two verbs next to each other. That's all I'm trying to say. You can't do that. Oh, right, same thing. Let's look at this one. Watch carefully. I'm going to do it very slow. Okay. Group known as the Navajo Code Talkers took part prepositional phrase comma meaning open parenthesis again transmitting information now if you have multiple commas you have what we call a comma b comma c comma and and this is called parallelism meaning meaning right this one right oh uh, transmitting information tactics troop movement all this has to be A, B, C, right? D, E. They all have to look the same. Unfortunately, right, there's one that is not really okay. You can see this. This one is not working, right? Information, tactics would have worked, but information, comma, on tactics is not good because everything else doesn't have preposition in front of it. So instead, you say information on tactics, meaning get rid of the comma there. So you go information tactics comma. Now look, right? So transmitting information on tactics stuff. Now look, I said commas, if you're really gonna work on punctuation for tonight, the only thing that you have to remember is comma, right? Comma, you don't need semicolon, you don't need colon, you don't need any of these m dash, n dash, right? Just focus on comma, opens or closes parentheses. So you gotta remember going in, opens and closes parentheses. Now, in terms of same thing with parallelism, look, it says this is present tense. It's actually present perfect progressive, but you don't have to know that either because that's gonna confuse the heck out of everyone. It's okay, you know, you don't have to. But just know this is present though. Have been using is present perfect progressive. Now, if you go back, you just kind of have to look up and down, like, you know, look up and down. What tense am I in? It's like looking around for directions, right? Am I, on, am I going north, south, west, east, right? And then everything is in the past tense. Look, it's in 1942, took, right? 
So simulated, so that better be past then, right? If up and down are past, should be past. So there you go, past, right? This is conditional present, and this is future, and this is present perfect progressive, past. That's all you gotta know. Don't worry, Ryan, I'm here. <laughs> well, you just joined when we're ending public AC. Oh yeah, a quick review on semicolon, cool. Uh, I'll do that as a last thing. So semicolon equals period or comma end. So it's either this or this, okay? Uh, it's actually something in between those two. Um, I don't want to bore you to death, but you know, semicolon is when you have, who asked that question? Okay, Marty, think of it this way. Uh, I'm not gonna eat, say I'm not gonna eat, I'm on diet. I'm not gonna eat, I'm on diet. So I'm, those two statements are very closely related, then you use a conjunction, okay? So you say, I'm not gonna eat because I'm on diet, so that's conjunction. Now if you say, I'm not, I'm not gonna eat, right? And then you say, I love chocolate. So it is kind of related, but it's not really directly related to hunger, right? You're saying like, oh, I'm not going to eat anything today. I love chocolate, right? Now, this is what we call semi-related. And semi-related is when you use semicolon, right? But what if you say, I'm not going to eat anything today. I'm going home. I'm not going to eat anything today. I'm going home. Those statements are not related. And that's when you use a period. Okay. So conjunction, strongly related, semicolon, semi-related, and period is when it's not related. That's all you got to remember. And what is a colon? A colon is when you have a statement and you're trying to do three things. One, elaborate. Two, list details. Or present a what we call a wow so without complicating things for tomorrow when you have a colon meaning whatever comes after it's a very important detail so in, in, in Matt, just think of it as a very important detail what, whatever comes after colon is a very important detail to whatever came before that okay so again, colon is a very important detail whatever comes after colon is very important detail of whatever came before the colon uh, that's really all you can do. If not, you're just going to complicate the crap out of it. And then you're just not going to be able to remember anything. Guys, uh, I do hope and pray that you do well tomorrow. Um, someone told me that I, I was making it sound as if SAT and ACT was everything to school. And it meant so much. I keep saying that because that's just not true. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying, if you're gonna take it, if you don't take it, hey, more power to you, you know? You made a choice and that's fine, you know, I respect it. But if you're gonna take it, why not review, right? Why not review this a little bit so you might end up with a better score that might give you an edge when ingressing to a school or also scholarship. Now, I believe when taking these tests, the scholarship is more important than, than the aspect of of it being beneficial to the college admissions, I really do think, I've seen crazy numbers when it comes to scholarship based off of SAT and ACT. That's why I think you should do it. And I do think this way of solving things that you're seeing right here, it's very sort of reminiscent of what college years were like for me, meaning whatever you do right there in terms of reading and solving problems is what you most likely are gonna do in college anyways. So it's a good practice too then for college, right? So you're trying to kill three birds with one stone, college admissions, scholarship, and college preparation. Is it worth it? I think so. It's just like an hour, I mean, you know, two days each, two hours total. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. No harm done, guys. I wish you luck. I really do think that at week, whatever we cover yesterday and today, it's it's a lot of stuff that you can actually bump up your score two three four points easy yeah look after sat act is done this summer we're going to cover for those of you rising seniors we're going to cover about application we're going to talk about essays i'm going to post them on not only you know tiktok but i'm preparing youtube 
So we're, we're just, I'm just trying to give you stuff, you know, that I learned over the years. So please just use them to your advantage and hopefully, you know, you, you're happy with the results. Anyways, Mr. Mike Z will be waiting for you at five o'clock and keep in touch. Discord's active. So those of you who are not part of Discord, please join Discord. I'll be talking to you there. Thank you so much, guys. Do well. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, we'll do something on a regular basis. Hopefully, we'll schedule something so we can meet up on a regular basis. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. Have a, have a great weekend, too. Thanks, Esteban El Gallo. Esteban El Gallo, buena suerte. Buena suerte. Buena suerte. Yes, we're going to do college essay roast, which is always fun. Uh, roast the heck out of hundreds of essays this summer and fall. So enjoy. It's going to be comical. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be awe-inspiring. Uh, where do I find? No, I'm going to send you right now to, to, to the channel. Boom. See you guys. Goodbye.